It all started in just a humble garage. The year was, I don't know, year, year one is that? 1 AD, just after Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> and the world of computer games was about to explode into existence. One man, Dennis Video Games, had one dream. To make the greatest game company of all time. Studio Dennis. Would one man be able to keep up with the fierce competitiveness of this developing online world? Oh god, he was already losing money just paying rent for this place. Wait, whose garage even was this? Whose car was that? Those were questions for another time. For, right now, Dennis had only a single thing on his mind. And, with this, he began to create his very first game. To create a game though, Dennis would need an idea. And with his very limited amount of skill or experience, Dennis decided to have a search around for topics he might be able to pull off. Hmm, I'm not so sure Dennis, are these really the best options? He decided in the end to make a surgery adventure game for the PC. It was unconventional to say the least, but for some reason, to Dennis, it felt like just the thing the world needed. He could just imagine it now. A surgeon gets transported to a fantasy world and has to go around giving double heart bypasses to mythical creatures. Yes, this was it. This was the game that was going to make Dennis into a big star. He called it Minotaur Surgeon, and without a second thought, he got to work. Unfortunately, Dennis was paying so much to rent out someone else's garage, he couldn't yet afford to do any graphics. So Minotaur Surgeon was gonna have to be an entirely text-based game. Oh well, the general public were just going to have to enjoy reading about fantasy-based surgery, particularly as Dennis had put so much effort into the stories and quests. Just as with the graphics though, when it came to sound design, the production became far too expensive. I guess this game doesn't really need sound, thought Dennis, as he hoped the noise of people clicking their keys on their keyboard would sound just similar enough to surgery so as not to break immersion. Well, this was it. There was just a few bugs to iron out, and the game was ready for release. Dennis was so excited. Soon, people from all over would be singing the praises of this wonderful, wonderful gay- Oh. Oh. Oh dear. It was not good news. Waste of money? Falls a bit short. Fun at stages? Which stages? The whole game was just one long wall of text. Oh, that- that may have been the problem. Despite the poor reviews, sales in the first week didn't seem too bad, as 2,127 people bought the game. Ten weeks later, however, and that number had only increased to just over 5,000. Plus, the money generated wasn't even enough for Dennis to get back to the total he'd started on. The worst part of all this was that Dennis still had zero fans, which meant that of the 5,000 or so people that did play Minotaur Surgeon, every single one of them must have had a miserable time. It seems the world just wasn't quite ready for a surgery-based adventure game. Dennis was in desperate need of some new inspiration. So, once again, he returned to the list of topics, and this time, he decided to research mystery. Yes, perhaps that's what it was. The story of Minotaur Surgeon had been very straightforward. You find a Minotaur with a medical complaint, and you perform surgery on it. If Dennis could make a game with an element of mystery about it, he was sure that people would be more engaged. But what should this mystery be about? Maybe something to do with someone committing an unspeakable crime. Something dark. Something that would send shivers up even the most hardy player's spine. And then, the perfect title came to him. Who spilt all of my milk? It was genius. The player would stumble upon a puddle of milk. In text form, of course, because God knows he couldn't afford graphics now. It is then the player's job to interrogate a series of characters. And at the end, you have to say who spilt the milk. This was going to be the one. Dennis would be out of this garage in no time and oh. Oh goodness, Dennis had just gone into his overdraft. He rushed to get the game finished before his bank account was in real trouble. But no matter, as soon as the game was released, he would be swimming in money. He was sure this game was so good in fact, that it might even make him a millionaire. And then, the reviews came in. A disaster? Disappointing? Abysmal? 
who spilt my milk had received an average of 2 out of 10 across the board. This was terrible news. Dennis was already struggling to break even as it was. Apparently mystery and action is a terrible combination. Okay, sure, maybe Dennis had put one too many fight scenes into the game. But you can't sit there and tell me that if someone spilt your milk, you wouldn't want to lay a few punches on them. With the game only selling a disappointing 3,000 or so copies, Dennis's financial status was going down the toilet. If his bank account reached minus £50,000, he might even have to file for bankruptcy. Everything depended on this next game. It was going to have to be something spectacular. There was only one thing for it. Minotaur Surgeon 2! This time, Dennis would focus entirely on the simulation aspect of the game. Screw adventure! This game would have such detailed surgery mechanics that it would feel like the player was really there. Taking out a minotaur's kidneys, fixing an ogre's spinal cord, or giving CPR to a unicorn, Dennis was going all in. He spent an extra 10k on 2D graphics, an extra 5k on sound. Before long, a reporter from the local newspaper had taken interest in the project, and, after publishing an article, hype for the game began to build. A whopping total of five people just couldn't wait to play the sequel to the underwhelming Minotaur Surgeon 1. And then, knock knock, it was the bank. It was over. Rent was due. Dennis was £52,000 in debt, and the game wasn't even finished. Could this be the end for Studio Dennis, doomed to fail after publishing only two mediocre games? But what was this? The bank was making him an offer. If he accepted, Dennis was to be given £78,000. The catch? In just a year's time, he would have to pay back double. With no other option, Dennis had to take the risk. But, as he finished up Minotaur Surgeon 2, the feeling was tense. He was noticing a pattern forming. If he kept up this streak of horrendous games, his debt was only going to get bigger and bigger. Minotaur Surgeon 2 was released, and the first reviews came in. Please not another flop. I can't handle another flop, thought Dennis. But wait, Star Games gave it a 7. Well, that's not a bad score. And no way, Informed Gamer gave it an 8. Minotaur Surgeon 2 was a roaring success. Game Hero described it as a good game. Dennis had done it. He'd finally made something worth playing. Over the next few weeks, the sales were off the charts. And, in even better news, Studio Dennis now had a grand total of 47 fans. Wow, things were on the up. And, by the time it was taken off the market, Minotaur Surgeon 2 had made just enough to pay off all of Dennis's debt. Taking advantage of this great turn in fortune, Dennis was ready to launch straight into his next game. And, at that very moment, he received a news broadcast. Apparently, a Japanese company called Ninvento were having great success with their new console, the TES. This presented Dennis with a dilemma. So far, he had been making games for the PC. However, if he spent £80,000 on an Invento license, Dennis could make a game for the more lucrative TES. Throwing caution to the wind, Dennis decided this was a risk worth taking, for he had always had a dream to make his very own family-friendly sports game. The game would be called Dennis Sports, and the good thing about this was that Dennis sounds very similar to tennis, so he was hoping that fans of tennis might accidentally purchase the game by mistake. Little did they know that tennis wasn't even going to be an option in the game. No, no. Instead, players would be able to choose between water polo, mixed martial arts, clay pigeon shooting, beyblade spinning, and sheep herding, all of Dennis's favourite spectator sports. By the time the game was done, it had broken new records in design and technology. But what Dennis hadn't accounted for is that producing a game for Ninvento was quite an expensive process. And as he yet again dipped into the red, he received a reminder from the bank that his £140,000 debt was due in just three months. Goodness me, time flies when you've got crippling financial problems. For the umpteenth time, everything was riding on the studio's next release. Dennis Sports had to be a success. 
The reviews were in. Seven from Star Games, a good start. Then seven again from Informed Gamer. Game Hero had the audacity to give it an eight. Perhaps there was nothing to worry about after all until... Ugh. All games had slivered in at the last second with a rather unflattering six. Quirky but good. Oh, sorry, all games. Why don't you just change your name to all games except Dennis Sports, which is a bit too quirky for us. With this rogue review, Dennis now had no idea whether his sports game would make enough to pay the bank back. He watched as the sales ticked up. The wait was agonizing. 30k, then 70k, then 110k. He was going to make it. And just as the bank withdrew his £140,000, Dennis Sports hit the threshold and the studio was safe. Well, thank goodness that whole mess was over, and he could now focus on repairing what little reputation Studio Dennis had. The first thing to do was rectify all of the stains on his otherwise spotless record. Ah, it seems that most of the games so far were probably stains. The most terrible game of all though, of course, was Who Spilt My Milk. Dennis decided to use what he now calls the Minotaur Surgeon 2 strategy, and he started work on a sequel. Who Spilt My Milk? Again? Yeah, something like that would do. This time, the story would center around a milkman who was involved in a car accident and wanted to chase the perpetrator. This was a much more dramatic scenario than its predecessor, and the general public were much happier with the outcome. An 8 from Informed Gamer. Played it for days. A 9 from Game Hero. More, please? What, you want Who Spilt My Milk again, again? The game was a storytelling sensation, and by the time it was off the market, it had sold 42,000 copies, and Studio Dennis was no longer the laughing stock of the video game world. It was time for Dennis to move into his next phase, market domination. And after tuning into the news again, he came up with a devious plan. Ninvento, the company that had facilitated the modern classic that was Dennis Sports, had just released their new handheld console, the Gameling. Dennis's idea was to make a virtual pet game targeted towards children, in which they could catch virtual animals and then train them in a battle-type system. What an original concept. He called it, Please look after my tortoise. This would be easy, because the thing about children is that they're, they're really stupid, so this game didn't even need any story. What, you think a little child could understand the complexities of a narrative such as Who Spilt My Milk Again? No, this time it was all about the gameplay. You needed to be able to poke your tortoise. You needed to be able to prod your tortoise. Your tortoise needed to be able to poke other tortoises. This was going to be incredible. And, as the game finished and the reviews came in, incredible it was. A 9 from Star Games, a 9 from Informed Gamer, and then, oh my goodness gracious me, a 10! His first ever 10! Please Look After My Tortoise sold 170,000 units within the very first week. Anyone who was anyone was running to the store, picking up a gameling, and then running home to raise a tortoise of their very own. In the blink of an eye, the game hit 500k sales. Dennis was now a multi-millionaire, and that meant it was time to take Studio Dennis up in the world. That's right, they were moving into the big city. Dennis was out of the garage and into his very own office.